In this demo, we're going to see how query plans are reused with stored procedures. And we're using SQL Server 2012, but this code will work for versions back to SQL Server 2005, with one exception, which I'll point out. We're going to connect to our AdventureWorks 2012 database, and we're going to create a stored procedure. Let's get this out of the way. And our stored procedure is pretty straightforward. We're just going to select product ID and order quantity from the sales order detail table based upon product ID. So let's go ahead and create our stored procedure. And we're going to set statistics IO on. And we're also going to include our actual execution plan. So we're going to run this query first for product ID of 942. And we run that and we get five rows back. And if we look at our statistics IO output, we can see that we had 27 logical reads, two physical reads. And if we look at our execution plan in a little more detail here, we can see that we had an index seek against a non-clustered index. And then we had a key lookup because not all of the columns that we needed existed in the non-clustered index. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do the same. Actually, what I want to do is I want to take note of this. Let's copy this and put it here for reference. Now let's execute the same procedure, but for a different product ID. And in this case, we get 3,095 rows. And if we look here at our IO statistics, we see that we have 9, 000, over 9,000 reads. So let's just drop that over here for comparison purposes. Okay, pretty big jump. But if we come back and we look at our plan, we have the exact same plan, right? We have an index seek here and a key lookup just as we did before. But you might notice that the line's a little bit thicker here. And we're gonna come back and talk about that in a minute, but it's because there are a lot more rows that are involved, right? The estimated number of rows was 27, but the actual number was 3,095. What I wanna do now is I want to query the plan cache to get some information about this particular plan. And here is this particular plan. We can expand this out, right? And here's our code. And if we clicked on this, we would see the same query plan that we've been looking at. And this is the, the, the plan that's in cache, and therefore this is the plan that gets reused by the stored procedure every time it comes in. And again, our use counts are at two. If I run this query again for a different product ID, and then I check my use counts. This goes up to three, right? So this is one of the nice things about stored procedures. I get a plan in cache, and then that plan gets reused over and over again every time the stored procedure is called, so it doesn't have to recompile every time. So there's a nice little performance benefit here. If I run this query with literal values, Right, so we'll basically run the exact same query, but I'm running it not as a stored procedure, but I'm putting the actual value of 942 in here. I get those five rows. I'll do it for 921, and I get my 3,000 rows. If I then look at the use counts again, now I see here's my procedure with its three, but I also have this query that I ran for product ID of 921 which ran one time, 942 ran one time. So when I'm using literal values, then I'm getting a unique plan for each variation. Now, one thing I wanna do here is I wanna show you why there was such a difference in terms of IO. Well, we understand that there's difference in IO because more rows were returned. But let me show you something. Let's take this procedure and let's take the plan handle and I can never remember the plan handle, right? It's a really long plan handle, I can't remember it. And this statement right here, this DBCC free proc cache with the plan handle is gonna remove this particular plan from cache. And I'm doing this because I wanna demonstrate something. You don't have the ability to do this in SQL Server 2005. It's only available in 2008 and higher. So I'm gonna run that. And if I rerun this query right here, right, you'll see that my store procedure no longer shows up because I've cleared it from cache. 
Now, when I ran the store procedure originally, I used product ID of 942 first, and we had an index seek with a key lookup. Now I'm going to run product ID of 921 first, and I get my 3,000 rows. But look at this. My logical reads are only 1,200, where before, if we scroll up and take a look, right, I was in the 9,000s. And the difference here is the execution plan. Right now, I have a clustered index scan because so many rows were being returned for that particular product ID. SQL Server said it's more efficient for me to scan the in to scan the entire clustered index as opposed to doing the non-clustered index scan or seek and then doing a lookup. And this works great for that particular value. But if I come back and I execute that now for 942, which only returns five rows. I have the same amount of I.O. because I have the same execution plan because it's in cache. So one of the benefits of stored procedures are that I get the same plan, which is reused by the procedure every time. So I'm decreasing my compilation time. But a drawback is that I can have this issue here, which is a parameter sniffing issue. And you can work around this. There's a lot of variations. And again, Kimberly gets into this in more detail in her course. One thing I'll just mention here is this option of with recompile. If I run this store procedure with recompile, it will generate the right query plan based on the data distribution. Right here now I have my index seek and a key lookup. The drawback, obviously, is that when I have this recompile on here, that code has to recompile, generate a plan every single time. So it's all about a balance, right? Understanding the positives and the negatives here.